All right, we're told a crate is given an initial speed of three meters per second going up an incline, which is making an angle of 30 degrees measured with respect to the ground. We'll neglect, neglect friction in this scenario. And we'd like to know how far up the plane will this crate go. So whenever you're starting a problem out, besides drawing a picture and drawing a simplified picture if you need to, it may be worthwhile to imagine what the scenario is going to look like. If the block, let's say, had started here and wound its way going up the, the ramp like this, that suggests that we want to choose coordinates that are convenient. In other words, we want to choose a coordinate that goes along the direction of the ramp and perhaps also a coordinate that goes perpendicular to the ramp. So that's actually the first place I'm going to start. I'm going to draw coordinates. I'm going to let the x direction go down the ramp. And that's just a personal choice. You could have it going up the ramp. That would be fine as well. So let's choose coordinates like this. x going down the ramp, y going up the ramp. Since we have a picture already, that's great. We're ready to draw a free body diagram, FBD. We'll do that by representing the dot representing the block or the crate. And before I go any further, I probably want to put in some dashed lines to help me figure out the direction of the forces uh, and their components in case I need them. Let me go ahead and do that with this blue line, trying to make it parallel to the picture that I see. That'll be the ramp direction. In other words, this is the x direction. This will be the y direction. I know that the force of gravity points straight down, looking something like this. That's Fg, or mass times g. I also know that the surface, the plane, provides a force that stops the block from falling into it. Now there's no friction, so there's no force that is parallel to the surface, but there is a force that is perpendicular to it. That is what we call the normal force, the force that a surface provides that points perpendicular in all senses to that, to that surface. There are only two forces. The normal force is convenient as we've chosen our coordinates because it points purely in the y direction, but you notice the force of gravity points both in the x and the y direction according to those coordinates. So what we're going to do then is take the force of gravity and break it up into components that are convenient. And in order to do that, I'm going to take my blue color and I'm going to again draw in some dashed lines to help to guide my eyes. This is in line with the normal force, which means that it is in line with the y direction or the negative y direction technically. And as long as I'm doing this, I could put some dashed lines through the head of the gravity arrow as well, and that will help me to decompose these components. I'm going to do that by drawing another dotted line that goes parallel to the one that I just drew. There's no harm in drawing extra dotted lines. And I'll make a dotted line that goes parallel to the initial dashed line that I drew. So there, there we go. Those two dashed lines point parallel to x. The other ones point parallel to y. Now that I've done that, I can easily see that there is a right triangle, and I can identify the right triangle here. I can also identify a right triangle here. And uh, it's not yet clear which one is, is useful. One more thing I could do if I, if I so chose, I could also indicate the ground, which I'll put here. And I'll do that so that I can identify the relevant angle. If this angle is called theta, which in our problem is 30 degrees, then you could convince yourself that this angle was the complementary angle to theta, which you could call phi or anything else that you like. But if that is complementary to theta, then the complement to the complement must be theta, which means that this angle is also theta. I'll leave it to you to prove that. Given that information, it now becomes a little bit easier to decompose the gravitational force into its parallel and perpendicular components. What I mean is 
this side length of the triangle, we can call this the perpendicular component of gravity because it points perpendicular to the surface. This here, I will call the parallel component of gravity because it points parallel to the surface. Following the usual rules of trigonometry, this is also a parallel component, we can determine what those components must be. This one involves the opposite side, so it involves sine of the angle. Perpendicular component involves the cosine of theta. So we're done taking our force vectors, making them nice and convenient, and now all we need are the ones that point in the y direction or the x direction. Let's go ahead then and figure out something to do with the motion of the object, which is moving only in the x direction. We will need to apply a concept. So let's think about the concepts that we might need. We've got forces, we've got Newton's laws, and we also have motion, or kinematics. So the equations that might correspond to those concepts, Newton's laws, Newton's second law in particular tells us the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. The kinematic equations are the ones that look like this. X is equal to X naught plus V naught T plus dot dot dot. V is equal to V naught plus A T and V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A delta X. What are the knowns? We know the initial speed, V naught. We know this angle, theta. We actually do know the final speed because we want to know how far up the plane it will go. At its highest point, the final velocity will be equal to zero. So when we go to make our list of, of quantities, x naught, x, v naught, v, a, t, we could choose, for example, x naught to be equal to zero. The final x is unknown. The initial velocity is three meters per second, but on its way up the ramp. So to be consistent, if I've oriented my coordinates like this, I'll make v naught equal to minus three meters per second. You don't have to do that, but I need to do it the way I've drawn the picture. The final velocity is zero. The acceleration is not known, but we can figure that out. The time is also not known, but I suspect we don't need it. Let's go ahead and try. If we need to know something about this is what we really want to know its final position, we'd love to be able to use one of these kinematic equations. The simplest one is probably this because it doesn't involve time. We don't know the time, we don't need the time, but it's only possible to know if we know the acceleration. So that's what we need to do. We really need to figure out what the acceleration is in the x direction. So let's see if we can therefore apply Newton's second law to figure out that acceleration. Newton's second law in the x direction is actually now quite simple because there's only one force that points in that way. Here it is. That tells us the net force in the x direction is equal to the parallel component of gravity. That's equal to m times the acceleration in the x direction. Therefore, this is fg, which is mg, times the sine of theta, and that's equal to mass times acceleration. The masses cancel, and so we've learned what the acceleration must be in the x direction. It now seems like we'll have a chance at solving this problem. We can apply this acceleration here and determine what is delta x. So let's now apply this equation that we have. The final speed is zero. The initial speed is minus three meters per second quantity squared plus two. The acceleration is g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. The sine of theta, if theta is 30 degrees, the sine of theta is one half. And lastly, we have delta x. Everything there is known, so we can solve for delta x. What you'll discover is delta x is equal to minus roughly 0.92 meters. The fact that it's negative makes sense given that we've orient our, uh, oriented our coordinates so that x has been increasing down the ramp. So x started somewhere and it moved its way up 
So its displacement in those coordinates is negative. So we could, in our final answer, write that the displacement was 0.92 meters up the ramp. And that would be our final answer.